Another statics problem is it's distributed load on the beam. Um, in this problem we have a pretty special kind of distributed load. Um, which looks like a triangle in the way I've drawn it. What that means is just at this point there's no force and then there's a little more force and then there's a little more force and a little more until you get the maximum force right at the edge here. Um, and it's hard to try to imagine in this case what that why you might have a distributed load in that sense um, but we'll look at real life examples uh, in later problems but for this purpose just know that to describe this force this distributed load you have qx q being that distributed load function equals uh, a given value q1 over l times x now you want to have in your head to understand why it looks like a triangle well, think in your head uh, basic uh, what is it, geometry uh, uh, think about a graph and a function like y equals mx n being the slope x being your x value and y being your y value in a graph it looks like that and if you realize here that q1 over l is your m and x is your x and q is your y well that's why you have a slope looking graph and in our case we think of it as a triangle you can remember that it, that's how it comes from this, some kind of slope which is q1 over l um, so same way we do our this kind of problem as always which makes you feel confident because you always approach these, these problems in the same way even though you have different kinds of loads, different kinds of connections um, Point A, point B. Here we got a vertical, horizontal possibilities. You can already imagine R2 is going to be zero. Um, and you have R3 here, only in the vertical direction because it's a roller. Fx equals zero equals R2. It should take less than five seconds all the time. Fy equals zero. Now we have R1 and R3. And we also have our distributed load. And now we have a problem. How did we write the entire load here? Um, well, this is what you do. You, um, using calculus, you're going to know that at each point here, you have some kind of value, which you can plug in x. And you want to add those all together. Um, so what an integral does is it sums up very small values over a certain distance. And we're going to know our distance is from 0 to l. And the function is described by q1 over l x. dx is our infinitesimally small part. So we're at this point, we're summing it up, adding it to at this point, this point, this one, this point, from 0 to l. That's what an integral essentially is. Um, these are constants. We can move it to the outside. That's going to become ql x squared over 2 when you do the antiderivative from L to 0. And so what you get for our, what we're doing here is we're trying to find a concentrated load at some point, um, which is going to be Q L over 2. Right? So that's our force. Now where is that force? Um, to understand that we need to look at a concept called centroid. And let's just say that this video is going to talk about centroid. So centroid is uh, to find out, well, where is this concentrated load? Where does it um, all these average out to a specific point? When we had just a horizontal distributed load, it's intuitively right at the center. But here it's not. Um, so to figure that out, it's kind of like finding out um, what we did here. But there's a fraction involved for the centroid. It's going to be a some kind of value a which is a distance the integral of x so x times this dx over what we saw for last time here you're multiplying your mass value by the where it is so you're getting some kind of distance reading um, over the total mass. So you're kind of averaging out to find a total distance because if you look at the units here, these are going to cancel out at the end of this and you're going to be left with some distance measurement. Um, if you do this, I'm not going to waste time with the algebra or the calculus here, you're going to get two thirds uh, 
L. What does that mean? From A, because we've been measuring positive from this direction, you can now say that at 2 thirds L, you can have a force of what we just got, 1L over 2. So we've turned this triangle into a single concentrated force and see that now this distributed load became a concentrated load problem, which we can solve exactly the same way as we did before. We have Q1L over 2 at 2 thirds L away. And that kind of makes sense for, for a triangle. It's going to be a little farther to the right than the horizontal load because you got the bigger loads on this side. So that all makes intuitive sense. So uh, having gotten what we need from the centroid, uh, formula. Now we can write this out, finish this equation because we have now three forces. So one negative, which is Q1L over 2. And then we finish with our moment equation. Let's choose B arbitrarily. Uh, it gets rid of R3. So we have Q1L over 2 at a distance. What is this distance? L over 3 away from point B, and it's negative plus R1L. If you solve for this, you get R1 is Q1L over 6, and then you can get uh, solve for R2. Uh, to do that, we're going to put it back into this equation. So 0 equals Q1 L over 6. That's plugging in Q1 over 6 for L plus R3 Oops, minus Q1 L over 2. If you get this right, um, this subtracted by this, it's going to be negative 1 third Q over L plus R3. So R3 is going to be Q1L of 3. So what does this mean? A distributed load in this sense gets more and more as you get here. And so you're going to imagine that this reaction force is going to be bigger than this one. It makes sense here. Q1 over L, one, Q1L over 3 is bigger than Q1L over 6.